All right, we're going to go over metabolic acidosis next. And yeah, let's make it. Hi, I'm going to What did you just say? Wake up. She said, wake up. How about that? That's what she just said. So yeah, wake up. And let's learn about. Thank you. Metabolic acidosis. All right, so very quickly, let's go over the normal levels for our ABGs or arterial blood gases. Thank you very much, Athena. I appreciate that. All right, so while I'm getting fed Play-Doh. All right, pH, 7.35, 7.45. Now, this is easy to remember CO2 because CO2 is also 35 to 45. So that's how I remember that. Just drop the 7 and all is well. All right? I also keep in mind the difference between HCO3 and CO2. Now, here's how I do this because there's two sets of numbers, right? But here's the thing. So your CO2 is the two is even, but the number is odd, all right? Now HCO3, the number is odd, but the numbers on the right are even as far as the ranges. Now, another way you can look at this is just kick that out all together and say pH and CO2, they are both odd and then say bicarbonate is even, and if you can't remember that, let me use my little drawy tooly thingy, then here's better, two plus two plus two equals what? <gasps> That's right, it equals six. I just love dumb, stupid, silly math because it always finds its way where it belongs, which is right where it needs to be, in the middle of science. It's perfect. All right, so next slide. Okay, so with metabolic acidosis, we are going to have a lower pH. That makes sense. Lower pHs have acidotic properties because they're acidotic. Yep, cool. Um, HCO3, lower. All right, cool. Well, that makes sense. So if HCO3 is too low, then our body has to do something to create a balance. Oh, boy, there's that word again. Yep, I'm going to create a balance by kicking off a bunch of CO2. All right, so if I don't have enough bicarb, I'm not going to get any more bicarb. So my body goes, oh, crap, we're going to die if we don't do something. Oh, crap. Hey, DNA, ancestral DNA, cavemen, cavemen, calling cavemen, what should I do? And caveman DNA goes, hey, dummy, I've been telling you this for generations. Just do the opposite on the other side. And then the body goes, okay, cool. And then it starts kicking off a bunch of carbon dioxide because if I'm not going to get any more bicarb, what my body's going to do is it is going to drop the CO2 levels so that it can compensate that gap and narrow it. Does that make sense? I, I should certainly hope so. Our entire body, everything that we do, everything that goes on around us is an idea of balance, is an idea of spectrum. Of, of yin versus yang, pick whatever religion, there is, again, a quote-unquote good and a quote-unquote bad. What if I told you that, well, there's really more gray area than anything because it's more about perception of the self. But that's a whole other discussion. What I want you to take from this piece is that the body is a spectrum, much like too low, too high is a spectrum. All right, so we're going to shift. And as we're posing this shift, uh, we could sometimes uh, drop a little bit more of us in order to compensate a bit more of us. So what does that mean? Well, it means that you have a simple understanding of how this works, and I feel like you kind of understand this slide as well as the rest of this better. But more importantly, the take-home message that is really the centralized message that I always keep digging into you is that you have the ability to co-create within yourself whatever you want, so long as you understand the simple concept of energy, frequency, and vibrational pattern, and simple balance. If you can create balance within your world, then you can create whatever you want within you, and within your surroundings, and within your existence, period. Oh no, I can't, because somebody is really affecting me in a negative way. Cool, if there's too much negativity, do the balance. Do the opposite to the inverse. Be happy. Take away the bad and see all the good that goes. See all the abundance you get. Move on to the next problem. Rather than wallowing, rather than sitting and letting the body die, aka being in a state of metabolic acidosis, let your body kick off the positivity. Oh, that's interesting because CO2 is what? Positively charged. That's cool. And... As you're kicking it off, it balances out that negativity that you're receiving. 
So you let them go with love. You give them love and guidance. If they don't trust it, let them leave. Let it go because you've provided yourself with a balance that has fixed the gap of your problem. Oh my God, that was so metaphorical and ridiculous. It couldn't possibly be real. Only it is because look at the science. It's all there because life is science. I told you this isn't new age spiritualism. It is. I'll give you that kind of because you got to get your brain understanding it from a simple perspective before you can get into the big science. But guys, you're already smart enough to get this. So why not teach you both? Because it's there. All right, next slide. Now I know what you're thinking. Who is this ugly dude? Now, I don't think that's very nice because we don't know who that boy's mama is, but it ain't me. So uh, it ain't my problem. All right. Meet Melvin, Melvin Ferd the third. I swear to God, that's his name, AKA the toxic Avenger. All right. So this is one of my favorite superheroes of all time for about 15 million different reasons. It doesn't even matter right now. So the reason I use him is I want you to think muscle. I want you to think toxic and muscle because when we're talking about lactic acidosis, this is a buildup of lactic acid. What we do is our body, when we don't have enough oxygen to supplement the amount of energy that we are going to produce, we then start wasting away at muscles. And what it does is it creates a byproduct uh, that it makes things very difficult for us to manage and uh, will also be the main cause for having this issue uh, that is metabolic acidosis. So cancer patients, um, they're very, very teeny tiny. Why? Because, well, the the chemo is basically eaten away at everything else the cancer has done as well. Um, and now we're eating away at the muscles themselves because there's no more uh, byproduct from carbohydrate use. So we go into, we go into emergency mode, right? Um, carbon monoxide poisoning because of its ability to be noxious to several parts of the body, same diff. Drinking too much alcohol, I think that's pretty obvious. Liver failure, well, we can't filter out all of that nastiness, so that makes sense too. Uh, low blood sugar, excessive hypoglycemia. Again, we don't have, um, we don't have what we need to feed our body. So our levels are down to nil. So people with that problem makes sense and so on and so forth. So I just need for you to get the idea of how this works. Okay, so when we're talking about someone with metabolic acidosis, we're talking about, again, pH that is below 7.35, CO3 or bicarb of under 22, HCO3, sorry, uh, accelerated heart rate or tachycardia. Well, think about that. If I have a disease that is basically wasting me away and I don't have uh, enough bicarbonate, so when I think of things that are um, acidic and are eating things away, I'm going to feel tired because I'm going to feel like my muscles are wasting away because they are. I'm going to have a loss of appetite because the idea of getting up to go feed myself is too much. I'm going to be dizzy and confused because I'm not eating, which means I'm not getting nutrition, which means I'm not getting vitamins, which means I'm not feeding my brain. See how this works? I'm going to be nauseous and vomiting because once you don't eat, right? Your whole body just feels like junk. So anything you intake, it automatically is going to be kind of gross to you, right? You're going to feel weak because again, you're not going to be able to want to move around much because you're going to be a little like achy, like a headache. I think, I think it all kind of ties together. So try to think of it in terms of what would my body be doing if this was going on with my body. All right, I think we're going to do this in under 10 minutes. So let me micro machine man talk this way out of here. And basically bicarbonate is what we're going to need because bicarbonate is going to be low. So it's going to be about retroactivating the original condition that dropped the bicarbonate or had the acidity too high. Um, hypokalemia, when we do retroactivation back into or back from the acidotic state, we're getting better is what we're doing. We're trying to recover the person. Every now and again, we can get hypokalemia. So keep an eye on, on that. Every now and again, I think I remember seeing a question regarding what do we have to pay attention to regarding recovery of metabolic acidosis and it is specific to hypokalemia. So put those two things together. Remember, I'm proud of you. I love you. You guys can do this. Seriously, you can do this. I know it seems intimidating. You're smarter than you think. You're smarter than you believe. You're smarter than you look. Catch up with those ideas and you will be great. All right, let's do it again later on.